The more you associate happiness with curiosity, the happier you'll be when your curiosity is satisfied. Welcome to the happy channel. It's TRS Clips. One last thing I want to highlight actually in this podcast is again Michio Kaku. And I highly recommend everyone go check out his episodes with Joe Rogan and Tim Ferriss. Incredible podcast. Uh, both Joe Rogan and Tim Ferriss asked him, other than quantum computing, what is the other technology that you're extremely excited about? He said that maybe it's not a technology as much as it's an area of research, uh, which is this whole genome project where they're trying to map out the DNA sequence of human beings. But he said that once we finish the genome project completely, uh, the next project will be trying to map out a human brain completely. All the neural connections. Now, I'm assuming that within a quantum computer, if you're able to actually simulate a universe, it's very easy to kind of create just a false human brain. Interesting. I, I suppose it should be possible to do that. Uh, see, as far as we know, as far as we know, in the entire known universe, the human brain is the most complex machine that exists anywhere. Right? And it's still a part of our universe itself. Yes. Yeah, so I think it could be kind of a challenge even for a quantum computer to kind of replicate the kind of brain that we have. We may be able to make it uh, trace out the path of the evolution of a brain from a very primitive tadpole-like brain into something of a higher animal kind of thing. And it, it may give us very interesting and surprising results. But to exactly replicate what a human brain is like may kind of be a challenge even for a quantum computer. That's what I think. I think it will be able to kind of draw the path of how the human brain evolution would happen or a, a typical brain evolution would, would happen. So let's say you have a bunch of neurons, you put them together and that's a very primitive rudimentary brain, the kind of brain, brain that you have in a tardigrade or a very primitive animal. And then you ask the quantum computer to try out all the iterations and see how this brain would evolve over let's say 10, 10 million generations. Let's see how it evolves, what, uh, what things are added to it let's say you have sense organs that you attach to the brain, then how will the brain evolve? So maybe it may be able to throw out different versions of how brains would evolve. But would it be able to replicate exactly what a human brain is like? I am not sure. Possibly it may happen. But what I would be interested in, interested in really would be understanding what consciousness is. Does consciousness actually emerge out of the human brain, out of the complexity of the brain? Or is it something else entirely? That's a hugely... Uh, nebulous and vague subject we don't even have a definition of what con consciousness actually is so if if we can harness the power of quantum computing will it throw some light on what consciousness is that's something that i would be very interested to know that's the one thing that no scientist has been able to explain oh absolutely. what is consciousness yes uh and everyone has their own definition of it yeah. um one way of looking at it is effectively your brain is in charge of anything that's happening in your body Anything that you're thinking, anything that you're feeling, it's definitely in charge of the emotions that you are feeling, right? So if you're feeling sad on a certain day, it's because your brain is probably doing something to make you feel that. It's telling you, it's telling your body, oh, release this song, I'm not feeling so good. Or if there's a death of a loved one, that input goes into your brain, it becomes a memory, that memory releases cortisol, releases, reduces the reduction of dopamine, etc. So it's a combination of electrical signals that massive circuit that's your brain as well as some triggers to release hormones which further then play on the brain that's yes, again yes. it's a complex machine which i'm also struggling to explain yeah uh i personally feel what's dangerous is that if you're able to create a brain inside a computer and you're able to put electricity into it and you're able to put the data of the entire internet into it which is where it gets dangerous and then that brain develops emotions Emotions possibly could create wishes and wishes could be, hey, I feel like destroying my master and taking over the earth, not running it my way. So as long as the uh, brain that we are talking about is merely a simulation inside the machine, it's fine. But if you give it kinetic assets like arms and legs or control over real world things, that's where the trouble starts. That's where the danger signals begin. So as long as it's just a simulation with emotions or whatever, it's just a simulation. It's a collection of atoms within the computer. Once you give it access to the external world through uh, various sense organs or you give it kinetic access, that's where it could actually start making a real world difference. So that's the line maybe we should not cross. Is 
quantum computing combined with AI, the closest we get to any of these apocalyptic sci-fi movies. Most likely, yes. This is where we should actually be a little afraid. Oh, very much. Okay. Yes. What is your final bottom line for this episode? My bottom line is that we are at the at, at possibly an inflection point. Maybe we are going to see the unleashing of very uh, interesting, very powerful technology that may change the world forever. It may obviously place a huge amount of huge amount of power in the hands of a very few people, maybe a, one or two governments, which could not be a good thing for the world. But if we use it, like any technology, if we use it for the betterment of humankind, it could really change the world for the better. It could eradicate all kinds of illnesses and diseases. It could, uh, you know, cure cancer. It could cure dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. It could uh, make our lives healthier, longer, give us better technology, maybe solve world hunger, maybe help us uh, travel to different planets. The possibilities are endless, but like every technology, it's a double-edged sword. It depends on how we use it. As a scientist, a geopolitical observer, and a bit of an engineer, do you think everything that you've said can happen in the next 50 years? Oh, definitely. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I think nuclear fusion will happen in the next 10 to 20 years for sure. We may we may have fusion reactors. Uh, space travel, traveling to the moon, traveling to Mars will definitely happen in the next 50 years, maybe the next 20 years. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, maybe high quality quantum computers with which can do cal calculations with high fidelity without breaking down. That may actually already be happening under wraps. So I think everything we discussed could definitely happen within the next 50 years. I'm not sure about the alien part, but apart from that, everything else. <laughs> okay. Good luck, humanity. Just don't blow yourself up. <laughs> uh, hopefully this is sent out into space uh, 100 years later as a little memory of what humanity used to be. Used to be like. <laughs> before, before everything changed. My God. If I ever have the money to, I'll definitely send out a time capsule into space and put this episode in there. In case my grandkids pass away because of a nuclear winter. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this. It's TRS Clips.